Jurassic Park, one of the most famous films of all time, one of the most loved films of all time. The film broke box office records when it was released in June of 1993 and held the record for the highest grossing film of all time until Titanic came along and was like, nah man, let me hold that money for you. Seriously, a love story set on a gigantic boat that hits an iceberg because of a dumbass captain made more money than a movie with dinosaurs and Jeff Goldblum who I am convinced is some kind of prehistoric creature in his own right. This film is one of my favourite films of all time, and the franchise, while questionable, is probably my second favourite of all time, beaten by the Alien franchise because, seriously, it's fucking Alien. But let's dive into the first film of the series in this retrospective and explore the reason for its greatness and why the film still stands on its own two feet today. Maybe dinosaur feet? or human feet, some sort of weird mix of the two anyway. John Hammond, a billionaire, maybe millionaire, I, I don't know, his wealth is never really covered, so let's just assume all the money in the world. He's created a park populated with real life prehistoric dinosaurs. But in order to open his doors to the public, his lawyers have insisted on getting the approval of paleontological experts, yes, I said that correctly, who have to endorse the park, or the doors will remain closed forever. He enlists the work of three experts, Ian Malcolm, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, Alan Grant, Sam Neill, and Ellie Sattler, Laura Dern, to take a tour of the park and hopefully garner their approval. Along for the ride is Hammond's lawyer, as well as his two grandchildren, probably not the best idea in the world, but hey ho, this is a string of bad ideas. There is a discussion on how the dinosaurs were made with lots of sciencey stuff and a delightful character called Mr. DNA. What? What? Oh, <laughs> Mr. DNA, where did you come from? From your blood. Who in no way resembles Jar Jar Binks. See Lucas, this is how you do an animated side character, you fucking sellout. They explain that the dinosaurs are all made to be female, to prevent any uncontrolled breeding, and that frog DNA was added in order to complete the genetic process of creating the animal. Anyway, the group embark on a tour that is programmed by motherfucking Samuel L. Jackson, which takes them around the park. The group are skeptical at first since the animals are hiding in their exhibits and nothing can be seen yet, but have you ever been to a zoo? All the animals do is sleep and maybe piss against the glass. Then we get to the T-Rex paddock. This is the big league now. The big dinosaur smacked front and centre of the logo. Up, close and personal. Except he doesn't appear and the jeeps are left parked in front of the exhibit. A storm is brewing in the background. No, um, I mean a literal storm. There is a literal tropical storm heading for the island threatening to smash shit up. The jeeps get caught in the storm and the fences are disabled because of a man called Dennis Nedry. Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! Now, earlier in the film, Nedry has been offered a large amount of money, but not as much as Hammond, nobody has as much as Hammond apparently, to steal dinosaur DNA from the park and take it to them. To do this, he shuts down all the fences of the park to create a distraction. 0.5 million if you Now, this guy is going to be our token idiot of the movie because every movie needs an idiot, right? So the idiot disables the fences, takes the embryos, and is swiftly killed by a Dilophosaurus after wandering into its exhibit. It spits paralyzing acid in his eyes and then proceeds to tear him apart inside his jeep. The idiot is dead! <coughs> he didn't last very long, so the fences are down. And oh fuck, the T-Rex is out and it flips the car over a ledge, which wasn't there before. Plot holes, am I right? Sending one kid with it, while Grant escapes with the other one. The kids are called Lex and Tim, by the way, but who cares, right? We do! The audience care! Stop writing child characters we really couldn't care about. Anyway, the T-Rex breaks loose, fucks up Jeff Goldblum, and eats the lawyer on the toilet. Gotta go, you gotta go, right? So now, 
Bron and the kids are separated from the rest of the group after Ellie went back to the visitor center earlier in the story. They trek across the island, semi-pursued by the T-Rex, on their way back to the safety of the visitor center and an escape from the park. Ellie and the park ranger Robert Muldoon set out to the T-Rex paddock to look for the group. They find the wrecked car, T-Rex tracks, and an unbuttoned shirt adorning Jeff Goldblum. Must go faster. The T-Rex can be heard approaching, so they get in the jeep and barely escape, making it back to the visitor center on time. Ellie and Muldoon head to the power supply to switch back on the fences after Nedry shut down the fences earlier. Now, I'm no expert here, but shouldn't the power supply probably not be next to the fucking raptor exhibit? Maybe put it underneath the visitor center where you don't have to trek past killer dinosaurs to reach it in an emergency. Anyway, they head to the power supply, but surprise, the raptors have escaped and they've killed Samuel L. Jackson. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. <laughs> They then proceed to hunt and stalk the pair, killing Muldoon and very nearly trapping Ellie underground. Clever girl. She switches the fences back on and security is restored, but that's not much use when you have three raptors and a T-Rex still on the loose. Eventually, however, the group is reunited in the visitor center and all seems well. Everything is good. Everything is fine. Right? Wrong. The raptors show up and chase the kids into the kitchen, creating one of the best scenes in the entire film. A claustrophobic clusterfuck which has the ultimate payoff of locking a raptor in a freezer and the two kids escaping. P.S. The raptors can open doors now apparently, that's just brushed over in the film, but... Yeah. The group realise the door locks aren't back online, and with their newfound skill, the raptors try to break into the main security room where they're staying. Lex hacks into the mainframe because it's a Unix system, and she knows this! It's a Unix system. I know this. And manages to lock the doors. The sense of security is shattered again, however, when the raptors realize, Hey! A big glass window! I can probably break that, being a fucking dinosaur and all, and smash through after the group who are now in the air vents, trying to escape. The group make it to the main hall of the visitor center, where they find themselves surrounded by raptors. Looks like this is the end for our beloved smorgasbord of characters. But wait! The T-Rex appears out of nowhere! Seriously, how the fuck did he get in there? Did he open the front door and squeeze in without making a sound? Because I don't think silence is in a 40-foot carnivorous dinosaur's itinerary. And crushes the raptors, saving the group in the process, who then swiftly escape with Hammond and Jeff Goldblum in a jeep outside the center. The end. Wow, what a thrill ride. Seriously, this film has some of the most intense and suspenseful scenes of the genre. The kitchen scene scared the heebie-jeebies out of me as a kid, and every scene containing the Tyrannosaurus was phenomenally epic. The effects are amazing and still stand up today, though maybe starting to look a little dated with the CGI shots. The animatronics designed and created by the late great mastermind Stan Winston look real as hell and add a depth to the anime. That's the thing about this movie compared to the sequels, who I will have to talk about sooner or later I guess. Everything feels real and relatable. The animals are given personality. We get attached to the dinosaurs and the idea that this park, if made safe, could be something amazing. The raptors are terrifying, the T-Rex is epic in scale and presence, the brachiosaurs are friendly, giving wonder to the kid characters and the audience. The raptors are only in the film for the final act and even then are given a minimal amount of screen time to themselves, but the build-up and the anticipation for their arrival is what makes them so memorable and in the hands of Spielberg they are made to be unstoppable forces of nature the perfect killing machine. Hollywood, get on that! Velociraptor vs. Alien. Make it happen, guys. The characters are also great. We have Grant, a character who hates kids but through his adventure learns about the joys and trials of fatherhood. Hammond and Malcolm who square off against each other, both in ideas and terrible dress sense. Seriously, you're on a tropical island and you think white is the best possible colour? I can see your sweat stains from here, Hammond. Clean it up. What is bad? No, really, how do you go about criticizing a film like Jurassic fucking Park? You can't, really, unless you want to nitpick. 
which for the purpose of this video I will in short and punctual fashion. The cliff that exists only in the minds of the screenwriters. The convenient T-Rex appearance at the end. Where the fuck is the security presence on this island? Seriously. One angry hunter with a rifle and a bad attitude towards raptors? That doesn't really cut it, guys. Needs more gold bloom. Well, actually, Lost World gave us that, so I'm not sure if we do need more gold bloom. Not very good if you don't like dinosaurs. But seriously, that's it. This film pioneered effects and filmmaking and brought CGI into the public view in a way that had never been done before. Fuck Avatar, you want to see groundbreaking film technology? Watch this film. The characters, the story, the action, everything blends together to create a genuinely heartwarming story about interesting characters trying to survive a horrible chain of events. And it created so many dino nerd kids like myself that were so inspired by this movie. It's an example of Spielberg creating something truly new and special, which blew box office history at the time and changed the face of cinema forever. Final verdict for Jurassic Park? 9.5 out of 10. A must watch for anyone and everyone, unless you don't like dinosaurs, in which case, why the hell are you watching this? Boy, my head been right all the time. Thanks for watching my video guys, uh, stay tuned to the channel for part 2 of this retrospective which should be here in a week or so, depending on how quickly I can pump that video out. I think if everything goes to plan, I'll manage to do this in about a night. But yes, thank you for watching. Stay tuned to this channel for more things. This is a new channel for me. Video game content, movie content, maybe podcast stuff. Uh, that's all we've got planned so far. But if you've got any suggestions, leave a comment below and like the video. Share it if you want. I'm trying to get traction going on this. But yeah, it was fun to make it. And thanks for watching. Alright, talk to you guys later.